Okay, so this quick video is about the export options uh, within Gaia. If you want to get information in and out of here, uh, height map information, uh, color information is pretty straightforward. You simply right click and you say mark for export or you press F3. That will tell Gaia that you want to export this information when you do a build. Alternatively, you can go to the mesher. In the mesher, you can just click and uh, drag and drop on there, it will connect it. And with the mesher, you do not need to mark it for export. That is not a necessary part of this. As soon as you create one of these nodes, the build manager automatically knows it and it sees it and it will be grayed out for you. So it's gonna build that if it's connected. So if it's in here, it's gonna do that. You cannot have any orphaned nodes or nodes that haven't been built if you want to use the build manager. It will complain and it will not allow you to work. So if I were to try and disconnect this, um, that creates an orphaned node and the orphaned node will not build. It has to be connected or it has to be deleted. So if I don't want to build a mesh at that particular moment in time, I have to delete it. Reconnecting that, the options that I have for this are currently a little bit limited. Some features are not yet available, but it will export a triangulated wavefront OBJ, so an OBJ at the vertex count that you establish. Quads would be better, but you're going to have to wait for quads. If you need quads, you can uh, have two options, uh, depending on the software you use. So. Um, Either you export a triangulated mesh and then you use um, an automatic tool to turn the triangles into quads in depending on the software. So something like Blender might do a better job than say Maya. Maya, we have a shift right click on here. I have quadrangulate and I've already done that because it takes a little while to process. Uh, and you can see what it's done. So all these are quads, but they're not in straight grid lines. Uh, which means I can't uh, up and down quickly the uh, the resolution uh, subdivisions of this. In something like ZBrush, if you have a, a grid of quads, uh, the subdivision up and down option uh, works perfectly, uh, but they have to be powers of two, and that depends on if they're powers of two of edges or powers of two of faces. So there's a, a value of one difference that's there. Alternatively, if you want quads in here, what you can do is you can export the height map information and put it on a grid using the deform texture deformer. Uh, that's the Maya solution. And what you end up with is because this is a um, live node, you can change the resolution dynamically. So you could you know, uh, start with 512 and then later you can type in 4096. Uh, it will give you a warning in terms of the subdivisions, but it will function just fine. And that will dynamically um, change the resolution count. And if your resolution of your height map is high enough, it will adapt and you will see all the new detail there. Um, you can also, of course, uh, export that mesh, that uh, quadrified mesh to other software uh, like ZBrush or whatever, where you can again play with subdivision levels there or Mudbox and play with it there. Height map can also be used uh, directly inside of ZBrush as an alpha for sculpting or as a displacement and then of course you can rebuild the resolutions from, from that level. Um, the reason why you'd want multiple resolutions is because maybe you want a low res and a high res and bake say like a normal map so that you can have high resolution looking detail as long as the silhouette looks right you're good to go. So you don't need full resolution for the actual mesh if you're using um, a normal map or a displacement. So uh, this particular tool, um, we have this vertex count. We can grab the slider and drag it. If I right click on this, I can go ahead and change the value. Say something like 2048, press enter, and it will change that. Alternatively, it has things like the minimum, maximum, half, double, uh, reduce by five, increase by five, and then reduce by one and increase by one, and then go to the default, which is currently 512. So if I click that, it jumps back to 512. If I want to double that, 1024, 
24.8, so the way that I can get to that number. You also have the LOD. LOD will produce multiple resolutions of this, so I should get uh, probably like a 24.8 and a 10.24 maybe from this when it exports, so I have more than one version of the mesh produced. Again, this can be useful for what it's intended for, which is LOD, um, level of detail, for those that don't know. Uh, or for baking normal maps uh, as another alternative option. Going into the build manager, we have the option of anything that we've told it to do, we can turn on or off any of the maps that it's going to produce. Um, we also can establish the resolution when we want to do it. And so we can have them all kind of set up, but turn them on and off as we go. So, you know, maybe I don't need a, like a high res flow, I'll just do a low res version, uh, but maybe I need, you know, a high res height map and a deposit and I'll change the resolution for that. We could also change the uh, format that we're exporting. Things like 16-bit data is uh, much more useful in terms of having a, a, a finer range of information. The details there. 32-bit also fairly useful, especially in cases where the values might have accidentally gone above the value of 1. Um, it uh, will store more of the data in there. So EXR, um, raw, etc., uh, HDR, those will store 32-bit data absolutely. Those are also ideal to use, so maybe better to use uh, in those cases. For me, when I want to output color, I'll often go with a PNG instead, and so maybe we'll turn off those guys and then export that. A reminder that the mesher, as long as it exists in the scene, will always rebuild each time you hit the build button, so if you are breaking up your export in this manner, uh, probably best to go ahead and build the mesh first, then delete that node, and then go through this process of exporting these other pieces in the different um, forms that you desire. Down here we have some additional options, such as resampling the resolution. This is useful for tools like Unreal, where different resolution or alternative resolution um, numbers uh, are expected and so you can use one of those unique ones. We also have the color space format. Now, uh, often cases you'll be dealing with color space uh, within the software that you're using, be it Nuke, Photoshop, Maya, etc. So you may want to just establish that there and just say, yes, it was stored as an sRGB, but actually I want you to read it as raw or linear or something like that, and then you can go ahead and, and do that. So. Um, you may want to leave that, that alone. Ignore vertical scale is similar in, in a way to saying use the full range. So in the cases where you have a mesh which doesn't go to the maximum height available inside of Gaia, um, because that would be t you know, too tall or weird looking, um, it will export uh, values that are under the value of 1. So you, know, you may be using um, uh, say 8-bit data or something like that and you're not getting that full range of information and so you may end up with uh, effects like stepping when you bring it in for displacement purposes. Now using a higher bit depth can spare you some of that but um, using something like ignore vertical scale may be useful in that respect. Another thing is you could go ahead and just use uh, an auto levels take an auto levels and connect it to whichever outputs that you need that maximum value from, so you want the best possible result, and then just set those to export and uh, build those that way. And that way you know that they work. Now of course what this means is that if you export height map information in this way, uh, when you bring it into the other software, the height may be different and then you just have to compensate for that. And pretty much every software will allow you to compensate for that. Like if it's output as an alpha, you just lower the intensity of the brush. Um, if you bring it into Maya with a texture deformer, you just tell it not to deform nearly as high. The, the height is something that you can establish at any given point in time. So again, most of the software allows you to choose the height information, but what it won't do is correct for any stepped um, and lost information. So again, it's always best to get the best possible uh, output. 
So you can go ahead and, and uh, turn that on should you desire. Increasing by plus one, this is going to increase the pixel rows um, by one. Uh, there is software that will expect this, and so you can do that should you desire. Save a copy of this tour file. Um, before you export, you have to save a copy. So save before you export always. It will complain if you do not, if the file's never been saved especially. But uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be on. This is an option that says go ahead and save it when it's going. Um, in this current version, I've noticed a little bit of a weird uh, glitch. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the workaround is actually turning this off and uh, it prevents the weirdness from the, uh, the, the build where it, it stops me from, from doing what I need to. So I don't really need to save it. Uh, I've already saved it. I'll just turn it off. If you're going away for the day, say you're using Guy at work uh, or at school or whatever, and you want it to shut it down when it's finished building because maybe it's going to take a really long time to build out all the maps, maybe the high resolution mesh, etc. You can go ahead and make sure that it shuts down when it's finished. By default, it will open up the folder when you're done, but you can also click this button right here and uh, that will open up that, that um, folder that everything's been saved to anyways. This folder is established right here, but it's also um, can be established at the beginning from the preferences build. Just as your preferred size and format, you have the where the data is being exported to when you build it. Be sure, as I said in the interface um, video, that you make sure that these locations are clearly something that you can write to. You have full rights to that, uh, that drive. If you don't have full rights to that drive, chances are there can be some glitches where things don't build properly or weird permission things that happen, uh, especially in a Windows environment. So um, I really, really... Uh, recommend making sure that you set it to like a D drive or a specific folder on that drive that you have a full uh, power over. So uh, once you've established the location, your format and whatnot, like you don't have to set it up there. You can set it here and uh, um, start the build, it will show you the rebuilding of all the individual nodes. If you have any errors or weirdness that happen within the building process, that will often be revealed there. So you'll see the glitch um, um, where it doesn't build correctly. Sometimes it may freeze on things. Sometimes you may have to just tell it to build a second time. Just uh, stop it in the middle of the process and then start again. If you see it's like sitting on zero for too long, um, just Usually stopping it and starting it again fixes those kind of issues, uh, I find anyways. And uh, um, yeah, if you run into any other kind of issues, uh, troubleshooting your, your node graph, trying to make sure that you get the output specifically that you need. Sometimes it may be altering the output directly from there or re remaking a node in order to make sure that it functions. Um, software is imperfect so uh, sometimes little, little glitches pop in it's just a matter of finding the workaround uh, the last thing that i forgot to mention is actually the beep when done which is pretty straightforward but i mean if you want to go off and make a sandwich or binge watch some netflix shows or whatever while you're waiting for it to go but then you want to check on it to see how it's doing um, you can tell it to beep when it's done and it'll beep and you can come and, and check it out so that has been the uh, exporting data. Um, hopefully this has been useful. If you have any specific uh, uh, cases where you want to see how it works, I may do something relating to uh, sending it to Maya and how I would use it. But uh, I feel the, the usage is pretty straightforward. I mean, you have reasons why you want to use masks um, because you want to use them to say drive uh, placement nodes like a, a mash network or something like that or distribution node in other software where you say hey where um, the deposits go I want trees to be generated there you can mask those things out um, or maybe those are lava pools and so I want to export um, the, the, the deposits to uh, mimic the idea of lava pools 
and so I'm going to emit particles of smoke from, from the, that location. So there's lots of reasons why you want to use masks for controlling certain things in other software. Uh, it can also be used in um, altering texturing uh, sort of things. So they can be masks for repeating tileable textures, say in Unreal or Unity. So they say um, this low resolution thing is the mask to say, okay, I have a tileable uh, grass texture or something like that and I want it to show up there and then have a different texture for these things. So uh, height map information, good for view, Terragen, uh, Alphas for ZBrush to use as sculpting um, tools or Mudbox, same deal. Height maps also useful taking it into Maya or other software where you can use it uh, as displacement for a flat grid. Um, and then of course the mesh is very useful. Uh, um, you can take that into ZBrush and do a rebuild, although you, you use the, lose the UVs, but um, UVs of course in this software are pretty straightforward. It's just a, a Y projection or a Z pro projection depending on what software you're using. So just you know aiming downwards from, from above and uh, it's a simple UV projection. So rebuilding the UVs is, is a, a no-brainer. Um, and then the mesh can be rebuilt as you know quads or um, refined and something like ZBrush or uh, any other tool. So hopefully you found this fully inform informational and uh, useful and I'm gonna go away.